Hi, this is Sherry Gallagher with Technicon Company Incorporated with a new set of videos addressing the implementation of ISO 13485-2016. So what is ISO 13485? It is a quality management system for medical devices, including requirements for regulatory purposes. It does not apply to pharmaceuticals. It is structured similar to ISO 9001-2008, the previous edition of ISO 9001 and does not follow the Annex SL. Lastly, it does not include the requirements specific to other management systems, such as environmental, occupational health and safety, or financial management. There are some differences between ISO 9001 and ISO 13485. When the 2015 edition of ISO 9001 came out, the numbering of sections between the two standards differed because ISO 9001 now follows Annex SL. ISO 9001 now no longer requires specific procedures. However, ISO 13485 does require the use of procedures. ISO 9001 added the term documented information to address both procedures and records, whereas ISO 13485 still utilizes the terms procedures and records. ISO 13485 has a specific section on medical device files and their content and a section on meeting regulatory requirements. This has never been a specific requirement of ISO 9001. However, regulatory agencies should be considered interested parties when implementing ISO 9001-2015. Finally, ISO 9001 no longer has a section on preventive action and considers it part of corrective action. ISO 13485 does have a section on preventive action. That is most of the key differences between the two standards. Both new versions of the standard, ISO 9001-2015 and ISO 13485-2016, do have similarities. Both have an expectation for the organization to consider risk. Risk has always been an important element of ISO 13485. Both standards expect a process approach. Both standards utilize a management review for improvement and communication. Both standards require resource management including personnel, materials, and equipment as well as control of the work environment. Both standards have a section on the planning of the QMS, design and development processes, control of suppliers, controlled production, and monitoring and measuring performance to create improvement. Simply put, there is no conflict between implementing ISO 9001-2015 and ISO 13485-2016 in the same organization. If you want more information about ISO 9001, there's a whole series of videos on it. But for now, we're going to focus on ISO 13485-2016. ISO 13485 specifies requirements for a quality management system, or QMS, that can be used by an organization involved in one or more stages of the life cycle of a medical device. The standard applies to component manufacturers and service organizations, as well as manufacturers of the finished devices. There are multiple jurisdictions with regulatory requirements for the supply chain of medical devices. If you are looking at implementing ISO 13485, you must know if you need to comply with European standards or Australian regulations. Those companies implementing ISO 13485 are expected to identify the organization's role under the applicable regulatory requirement. So they need to know, are they the company that reports a, an incident, or are they up the supply chain and must report to their customer? They have to identify who is the regulatory authority. Is it just the FDA, or is it, do they also need to meet Health Canada? Companies implementing ISO 13485 are expected to identify the regulatory requirements that apply to its activities under these roles. So does the company have the responsibility and authority to recall product? And what documentation is needed to be kept and for how long? And finally, a company implementing ISO 13485 is expected to incorporate the applicable regulatory requirements within the QMS, which means there should be procedures for reporting to regulatory authorities and or their customers, and there sh they should be implemented uh, procedures for traceability. 
Throughout ISO 13485, the phrase, as appropriate, is used. If your organization deems that a section of the standard does not apply, for example, your product does not have service or installation, you must note that as a justification as to why it does not apply. Usually, you state this in the scope in the quality manual. Not applicable can only be done in clauses in sections 6, 7, and 8. Reporting to regulatory authorities is a clause in section 8. However, if the organization is design responsible, then they must report to regulatory authorities, so that clause cannot be deemed not applicable, even if they are a component manufacturer. Now, the important thing for us today is that all the requirements in section 4 and 5 must be implemented. None of them can be exclu excluded or determined as not applicable. The term risk in ISO 13485 pertains to the safety or performance or the regulatory requirements of the medical device. It is not talking about ISO 18001 or ISO 45001 or OSHA, but the risk of the device to the patient or user. Terms and de definitions utilized in ISO 13485 are found in ISO 9000-2015, Quality Management Systems Fundamentals and Vocabulary, or in Section 3 of the Standard. A process approach must be utilized. The process approach must emphasize understanding and meeting requirements. It must emphasize uh, the, ter the processes in terms of the value they add. It must emphasize looking at the results of the process's performance and effectiveness. It must emphasize improving the process based on objective measurements. Yay! All right, now we've finished the overview. Let's get into the standard itself. Section 4, Quality Management System, and 5, Management Responsibility, are the big picture sections. This is where the QMS is planned, organized, documented, and responsibilities and authorities are assigned. Planning in these sections is about managing the QMS rather than planning production. Planning production is discussed in Section 7. Section 4 and 5 are the plan step in the Deming Plan, Do, Check, Act cycle. This video will cover Section 4. The next video, Part 2, will cover Section 5. Your first step in creating the quality management system is that you need to decide how your organization will handle the following requirements. The scope. What is in the QMS and what is not? Think exclusions and not applicable clauses. You also want to define the limits of the work you perform. For example, if you are servicing equipment, which OEMs do you work on? Anything you don't include will be considered outside the scope, unless you include a catch-all phrase such as and similar devices. You need to define roles. They must be documented and identify the applicable regulatory responsibilities and authorities to each role. If the FDA must be notified, who is doing what tasks? Who collects, documents, and reviews complaints for reportability? Having an employee unclear about who they are reporting to or what they are reporting is not an acceptable reason for missing reporting an incident. Now, you're also going to have to consider when you're developing the QMS documentation. How is documentation going to occur? What is the format? Is it electronic? Hard copy? In the cloud? Video? How is it approved and modified? You have to consider and define the processes and sub-processes, and you have to include the input to each subprocess and process and the output and the measurement method and interactions. You need to know if it's working or not. And if you change the processes, you have to look at and measure the impact of that change on the process and on the device. Developing the QMS, you need to identify the risks and the criteria to determine when a risk requires action. When do you need to reduce the likelihood? When do you need to reduce the severity or increase the ability to detect a risk? The QMS needs to determine the measure of the effectiveness of the QMS. 
So how are you going to do this? How do you know if it's working or not? Are there trends in key performance indicators? How do you know if you're getting better, worse, or staying the same? You need to ensure the availability of resources and information. Now we will cover this in more detail in Section 6 of the standard, but it is a requirement of the QMS. You need to implement actions to achieve the results the QMS is supposed to produce. If the QMS is not performing, you must act to fix it. You must establish and maintain records to demonstrate conformance to the ISO 13485 standard. You must control your suppliers. You are responsible for what they make and its impact on the medical device. You should have written quality agreements with your suppliers. Responsibility for risk cannot be passed back to the supplier for ISO 13485. And you must have procedures to document the validation of software used in the QMS. And software must be validated prior to initial use. Now this is a new requirement for 2016 revision and there is some discussion among auditors as to what this means. Most auditors recognize that commercially available self software such as Microsoft Word or Excel do not need to be validated unless you are controlling the QMS using macros that you have written into one program or the other, in which case those will need to be validated. Most auditors, but not all, agree on this. The only software that is used to test the effectiveness and conformance of the product needs to be validated. If you do not have a registrar, this is a very important question to ask when you're selecting your registrar because validation is a very expensive process. Okay, that summarizes the big decisions that need to made, be made to just to develop the quality management system. The next step is to get into the details and the first detail is documentation. ISO 13485 requires specific documents. You must have a quality policy. You must have quality objectives. You must have a quality manual. You must have documented procedures and records to demonstrate compliance with ISO 13485 and all documentation required by your regulatory agency. Let's start with a quality manual. It must include the scope of the QMS and reference documented procedures. I would recommend referencing procedure titles and numbers, but not revisions or including procedure content in the quality manual to avoid unnecessary non-valuated work or conflicting statements, when you, especially when you come to revise them. The quality manual also needs a description of the interaction of the processes. One of the most effective ways to do this is with a diagram. The quality manual outlines the structure of the documentation system. Is everything in one document the quality manual or are there levels such as a quality manual procedures and work instructions? The expectation is a list of document types, how they relate, and if a conflict occurs, which level of documentation is to be followed. One of the important requirements of ISO 13485 that is not in any other standard is the medical device file. The file needs to be for each type or family rather than for each individual medical device. The file must include a description of the device, including its intended use, labeling and instructions for use. And if you change labeling, you must update the medical device file. It must include product specifications. It must include specifications or procedures for manufacturing, packaging, storing, handling, and distribution. It must include procedures for measuring and monitoring. It must include, if appropriate, installation requirements and any servicing procedures. The first four items are non-negotiable, and the fifth is only not applicable if there is no installation or service involved with your product. A separate file called a device history record, while not specif specifically required by the standard, is needed. The device history record relates to section 7.5.9, Traceability. The device history record records the manufacturing specifics for each batch, including the specific personnel, the specific equipment, and measuring devices and all test records. I make it a point when I audit each year that these records are audited. So each and every audit I'm going to be looking at the device history record. 
The next requirement of Section 4 of ISO 13485 is control of documents. A procedure is required, and it must define how documents are controlled. The procedure must address how documents are reviewed and approved prior to issue. It must address how to revise documents and reapprove them so the re uh, reviewer understands the pertinent background. The procedure must address current revision status and changes and how changes are identified. It must identify how only the current document is available for use and how obsolete documents are identified and prevented from use. The procedure must identify how documents are kept legible and readily identifiable. I have a machine shop that specifically uh, encloses them in uh, a transparent cover or film. The procedure must document how documents are stored to prevent deterioration or loss, and the procedure must document how long documents are kept. Now your company has to be careful with this one as obsolete revisions of documents controlling the manufacturing process, think of work instructions, have to be kept for at least the life of the product and retained according to regulatory authority requirements. So if your regulatory authority says life of the product plus two years, you must you must implement that in your standard and your procedure. There's rather a lot to think about when designing and implementing your documentation system. Once the documents are controlled, your company needs to look at how it will control records. I am sometimes asked what is the difference between a document and a record. The easiest explanation I can give is a document tells how to do the process and a record shows exactly how you did the process. For example, a work instruction on how to weld a component to a medical device is a procedure, a form that records which welder, which personnel, and what lot of rod is used is a record. The records procedure should address identification, storage, security and I integrity, retrieval, and retention time and disp disposal. Now, understand that the retention time must be the life of the device, but not less than two years. And finally, the procedure must address how they protect confidential health information if it's contained in the records. Okay, take a deep breath. We've finished with Section 4 of ISO 13485. The next video covers Section 5, Management Responsibility. Management Responsibility is focused on planning and communication. So there you have the Quality Management System as addressed in ISO 13485 2016, Section 4. If you have questions or need help implementing the standard, please email us at technicon1986 at sbcglobal.net or go to our website www.technicon.com or call us at 708-814-3685. Have a great day!